Well, guys, in today's video, we got to go ahead and talk about Michael Burry, who is one of the most famous investors in Wall Street, mostly because he made one right call where he made a bunch of money and they made a, a movie on it. The movie was played by a really popular actor and the movie was good. It's called The Big Short. And ever since then, this guy just gets endless media coverage now. And I just wanted to talk about that because we talk about on this channel a lot of how the media often plays retail investors. And I always want to tell you guys, don't fall for the trick. Do not follow what any of these other sophisticated investors are doing. I would honestly follow the advice of what Warren Buffett says, which is the average person who works a full-time job who does not have time to spend eight hours a day looking at financial reports and analyzing stocks should just stick with the S&P 500 index. Let's go ahead and actually get into Michael Burry, though, because this is actually pretty funny. Matter of fact, CNN is reporting on it. That's what really caught my attention. When I saw CNN reporting on it, I was like, okay, this is huge. So it says right here in the CNN business article, Michael Burry of the big short fame just bet $1.6 billion on a stock market crash. Now, there's this wise guy on a, on a YouTube named Capital Mindset. And one thing Capital Mindset always taught me is you cannot get your financial news from somebody with a degree in journalism or a degree in mass media or political science. And he's absolutely right about that. Because a lot of people have been calling CNN out and saying, you guys are just dead wrong. Like, you're completely misleading people. Like, clearly, whoever wrote this article doesn't understand how options work or doesn't understand, like, what Michael Burry actually did. Because a lot of people pointed out that it is false that Michael Burry uh, bet, basically bought $1.6 billion in put options on the uh, SPY and the QQQ. That is what the article is alleging. But many people on Twitter and social media are saying that CNN is wrong and they misinterpreted uh, Michael Burry's trade. So just to clarify, Michael Burry did not uh, make a one point six billion dollar bet. I know that's the title of the video trying to get clicks here. Come on. <laughs> but, yeah, he didn't make a one point six uh, billion dollar bet. That's incorrect. He didn't put that much money down. Also, I did a little bit of research. He doesn't even trade like one point six billion dollars or whatever. He, he trades like several hundred million for what I saw. So that's another reason why this isn't even a thing because he doesn't even he doesn't even trade with that much capital, at least based on what I've seen. OK, OK, let's go ahead and get into the article. Just want to point that out. So he did not bet one point six billion dollars on the stock market crash. However, he did bet millions of dollars. He still put a pretty significant amount of money uh, betting that the market is going to go down in the short term. So now it says here. Uh, Michael Burry, who became famous for correctly predicting the epic collapse of the housing market in 2008, has bet more than $1.6 billion, again, that's wrong, <laughs> on a Wall Street crash. Burry is making his bearish bets against the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. So, like I said, I told you guys, he bought a bunch of put options on the SPY and the uh, QQQ, uh, according to the SEC filings released Monday. Burry's fund bought $866 million in put options. Again, wrong. <laughs> Uh, against the fund that tracks the S&P 500 and $739 million in put options against the fund that tracks the NASDAQ 100. Burry is using more than 90% of his portfolio to bet on a market downturn, according to the filings. I'm not entirely sure if the 90% thing is true either. However, it is a fact that he is literally using majority of his portfolio to bet that stocks are overvalued, the overall market is way too high and it's going to come down, which, by the way, I just want to say is a very irresponsible bet. Not a good bet for the average person to do. If you're a sophisticated Wall Street guy and this is all you do every day, I mean, I still wouldn't do it. But if that's what he wants to do, fine. But you, you better not do that, OK? <laughs> you're going to you're going to get destroyed if you do that. And, and that's why I don't like it when these news outlets cover this stuff, because what the media is doing is they're taking advantage of this guy's fame. They know that when they make these types of articles and write about it, it's going to get clicks. It's going to get views. And I think it's bad to do though, because, and, and like I said, I read this article, not once did they mention that you as a regular retail investor should not be doing this. Do not follow them. They, they didn't mention anything like that. They're just selling you the dream here. Like, Oh my God, Michael Burry, you know? So um, it says here, 
The SP 500 and NASDAQ 100 have both notched big gains so far this year. Uh, the SP 500 is up 16%. The NASDAQ is up basically 40%, which is true. Now, I don't blame him for the NASDAQ. I, at least I don't blame him for his thinking on the NASDAQ. I think that tech stocks are extremely overvalued. I think we're in another stock bubble. I think that we are in an AI bubble. And I think it's only a matter of time before the NASDAQ comes crashing down. So I get it. I just don't think that the average person should do this. Now, let me show you guys something else. Uh, that's very interesting. Now, somebody on Twitter, shout out to this person. Of course, my thing doesn't. Uh, there we go. So shout out to this guy, Adam Koo. Um, Adam Koo on Twitter brought up all of Michael Burry's recent predictions and uh, newsflash. He's been mostly wrong. As a matter of fact, besides 2008 and the housing market thing and the big short movie and all that, besides that big call that he made, he's honestly been wrong. And if you look at this guy's track record, he's literally a mega bear. He's like Peter Schiff. He's like Robert Kiyosaki. Every year, the greatest crash in world history is going to come. Everybody's going to die. You're all going to lose your money. You know, just the grumpy old man telling everybody that the world's falling apart. The United States dollar is losing its value. China and Russia are going to take over. You're, or you're all going to die. You know, that crap. But somebody did a great job at pointing out everything uh, all of the calls that Michael Burry made and basically the fact that he completely got them all wrong. So here we go. In 2005, he predicted the collapse of the subprime mortgage market. Housing market crashes in 2008, global financial crisis. That's when Burry becomes famous, makes a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. However, after that, you know, grumpy old man uh, kind of lost his uh, kind of lost his spark there because in December 2015, he predicted that the stock market would crash within the next few months. Well, it did the complete opposite. Within the next 12 months, the uh, S&P went up 11%. In May 2017, he predicted a global financial meltdown. The complete opposite happened. The S&P 500 went up 19% over the next 12 months. In September 2019, he predicted that the stock market would crash due to a bubble in index ETFs. By the way, people keep saying that uh, we're in a bubble right now in index funds. And I just ignore the noise. I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever, kid. And I just keep buying. I, I completely ignore it. I don't care. Because people tell me that all the time. Oh, you're an idiot for telling people to buy index funds. It's overvalued. It's going to come crashing. Yeah, okay, kid. Let's see who outperforms. Me or you and your little Palantir stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, 2019, he predicted that uh, the stock market would crash due to a bubble in index funds. And the S&P 500 went up 15% over the next 12 months. On March of 2020, he revealed a massive bearish bet on the S&P 500. Well, and by the way, uh, he actually was kind of late. Uh, he he must have got destroyed because I remember March of 2020. That's when COVID happened. If he revealed a massive bearish bet in March of 2020, that was honestly dang near the bottom of that market crash. And yeah, the S&P 500 went up 72% over the next 12 months after he made that prediction. On February 2021, he predicted that the stock market would crash due to a speculative bubble and he shorted Tesla. Fast forward, you know, uh, Tesla has done very well since then. He got absolutely destroyed in that bet. On September of 2022, he predicted that the stock market, uh, he he predicted that the stock market warned of more failures, bottom not hit yet. The S&P 500 went up 21%. And then in January of 2023, he predicted a recession and a new round of inflation. And he said to sell and the S&P 500 is now up 17% year to date. The bottom line here, folks, is this guy focuses on calling market crashes, shorting stocks, different things like that. Warren Buffett takes the opposite approach. He stays long-term in stocks. He stays invested. He continues to believe in America. He continues to believe that uh, a lot of the great companies are only going to do better. More companies will, will spring up and continue to do better and change the world and provide value. And uh, yeah, we fast forward. Who's been more successful? Warren Buffett or Michael Burry? I understand that Michael Burry's famous, but if you look at a lot of these calls, I would venture to think that this guy has probably lost a lot of money because most of his calls have been wrong, which is the complete opposite of Warren Buffett. Most of Warren Buffett's investments have been right. I'm not saying Warren Buffett hasn't been wrong. Oh, he's been wrong and he's lost money. But Warren Buffett has been way more correct 
than uh, Michael Burry has. That's why Warren Buffett is one of the richest men in the entire world. And a lot of people don't know this, but if Warren Buffett hadn't donated so much money, he would still to this day be the number one richest man in the world. The only reason why he isn't the richest man in the world right now is because he's already donated like tens of billions of dollars to charity. Had he not donated so much of his stake in uh, Berkshire Hathaway, he'd still right now be the richest man in the world. So I don't know about you, but... I'm going to continue to listen to the wisest and greatest investor of all time. And I'm going to ignore the noise and ignore people who try to tell you every freaking year that the world's going to end and the market's going to crash. And all they've been since 2015 is wrong, wrong and dead wrong. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.